So hi, Subhashni. Yeah, thank you for agreeing to do this interview. Uh, it'll be very nice to have your thoughts on the Real Leader blog. Okay. So do you want to start by introducing yourself? Okay. Telling us a little bit of your story. Where did you grow up? Uh, when did you come to Singapore? Just, just the whole thing. Yeah. I was born in Chennai okay. to uh, a very popular um, magazine illustrator, uh, Maniam Sarvan. And um, I didn't realize the, how much that would influence my life. Okay. Even until when I was uh, in, in, in 10th standard, 11th standard, I never realized my potential or what gift I had. Okay. I always had the thoughts of uh, becoming a doctor and then I took uh, science as my subjects and I, when I was in 12th standard, my mother spoke to me and uh, she was the one who told me that it is very, <coughs> it is very difficult to uh, establish your name Yeah. and it takes a lot of effort and uh, since my grandfather and my father has already done that. It would be easier for me to take it up from there. So yeah, she yeah. spoke to me to, uh, to doing fine arts, okay. drawing and painting yeah. in Stella Maris College. And so, um, actually I thought it was more logical. And um, I, I, when I was growing up, I never thought I was very good in art. My sister was very good. She, okay. what, what have we, are we uh, actually one and a half years apart. So we did everything together. So whenever we she drew we drew together and uh, she comes up with very nice drawings okay. and uh, so so I thought drawing was not for me but after my mother spoke then that was the time I thought okay I should give a try uh, yeah. and uh, I started preparing for my entrance exam in Stella Maris and uh, um, and I got through I was quite surprised but every time um, I wanted to. The thing was, it was very difficult to grow up with uh, very powerful figures above you okay. and everyone will expect a lot from you yeah. and um, so that actually made me uh, go into my shell and I, would, I wouldn't want to show my words to others. Even in college, uh, initially uh, our teachers would, would know that, oh this is uh, Maniam Salvan's daughter and they would come and see. And I would feel very guilty because I felt I wasn't actually okay. keeping up to the standard. But um, so that was the time when I was actually exploring and how I could do. But um, what happened was um, by the time I finished my college, I got married okay. and I moved to Malaysia. Okay. And I, I didn't really take it up much because I wasn't very confident at that okay. time. I okay. always felt I shouldn't be a bad uh, you know, um, I shouldn't, I always felt I wasn't up to the standards, what other yeah, people Yeah, expect. like what they've said for yes. you, right? <coughs> so, um, but um, after, my, after my life in Malaysia, I had a child and then I went back to India, uh, I was there for a while and uh, I was more interested in graphic designing and I okay. did uh, computer graphics course, animation course, I wanted to go into animation. But I, my husband then shifted to Singapore and then we came here and I started uh, working with Temple of Fine Arts um, uh, dance and it's a cultural school here okay. um, and I was doing uh, graphic designing for them and I did a lot of uh, uh, publicity materials and uh, brochures, flyers and that was the time I was actually identifying myself and okay. uh, the founder of Temple of Fine Arts, Swami Shantanan Sarasati, he uh, actually cleared the, uh, you know, uh, cleared the fear of me, okay. uh, you know, showing my works to the public, to public okay. and to come out and grow actually. So what happened, uh, there was a time when our Kabla teacher, Mr. Nawaz Mirajkar, and had an idea of uh, having a live show, a concert. When uh, they had a concert, they just thought if somebody paints live, so mm. it, in response to music. And uh, so we, uh, they had this performance. It was part of a monthly fundraising uh, program called Mela. Mm -hmm. So it was a Santut performance in January 2003. 
that was my very first <laughs> debut actually after a long break okay. after a very long break 1907 i finished my uh, uh, bachelor's okay. in chennai and this was in 2003 and uh, okay. that was january 26th and uh, that was the day that i had to perform as in paint in front of audience while the performance is going on so that was a very uh, Uh, stressful time for me okay. before the performance. Okay. But I did prepare a little bit, and uh, and the performance went, and then the painting was auctioned, and that actually brought me out of my shell. Okay. I would say, and then after that, uh, we after that, Swamiji was in KL that time, and he invited me to come there and paint for a few uh, Arangetram dance performances. Okay. So I. So I did the same thing while the dance is going on. I would sit there and paint, and then after that, I went to Perth and I did the same there for about four or three trips, three or four or okay. So that tour, uh, which um, was inspired by Swamiji to do this uh, attempt to do what is happening. Actually, yeah. it was inspired. The whole idea was inspired by uh, okay. M. F. Hussain. How can I oh, forget? Okay. M. F. Hussain <laughs> yeah. had actually painted during one of. Uh, A very popular uh, Hindustani vocalist's performance, okay. and uh, that was actually the inspiration for the whole thing. So it was an attempt, and I wouldn't say it was a great success, or I wouldn't mark that as a, you know, what, what I did very well. But that was the starting point, which uh, where where I started to paint again, and other people could see. And so, uh, so that actually that day, January twenty fifth, twenty sixth. Yeah. Of 2003 okay. was kind of a rebirth for me after okay. my uh, bachelor's, okay. and then um, about in 2006 I joined masters in contemporary practice in Nanyang Academy of Fine Arts in Singapore. Okay. Uh, where during the time in between 2003 to 2006, I I again went back to basics and I started painting and I always wanted to do masters. Okay. So the opportunity came and I did uh, masters. And my husband really supported through okay. the whole uh, uh, education and yeah. you know yeah. support actually to uh, at least to encourage when you are down and all. Yeah, that was really good. Okay. And uh, studying here in uh, Singapore, far away. From Chennai, where yeah. you know, I feel um, whatever I do, I will definitely show my father. Okay. Well, anything and everything, I will show him, and I will get his uh, feedback, and I will tell him. But that uh, education here in uh, Singapore made me to search few things for myself, and uh, the distance actually made it uh, comfortable for me to look what uh, look into what I really want to do. In art itself, okay. so kind of find my own identity and my clothing, my uh, yeah, okay, you know, okay. stage where I could do it in between. And of course, he did uh, help through in between, you know, during the research okay. process and so on. Okay. So the 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 whole uh, my development in the last ten years, uh, ten fifteen years, I would say, was. Okay. Uh, Was a very good uh, journey, you know, trying to identify myself away from my father's shadow, okay. father's shadow. Yeah, yeah. So even now, I, um, I, we had a group show in uh, Chennai in 2009, okay. where uh, we exhibited uh, three generation paintings: my grandfather's, my father's, and uh, mine and my sister's. Okay. My brother is actually a, a mechanical engineer. He is into photography, okay. but uh, uh, since we were just uh, exhibiting paintings only, so my sisters and I, uh, mine, uh, exhibited along with my brothers and grandfathers. Okay. Even th that was a very, um, it was a kind of a journey, uh, experience to exhibit my works because I did contemporary practice and uh, uh, my research was on uh, um, paintings inspired from music. Okay. And I am uh, I'm a, a Carnatic music singer, so okay. I sing myself. Yeah. Okay. And um, inspired from the 16th century Ragmala paintings, they had uh, paintings done for ragas. You know, uh, they okay. personified Hindustani ragas in human forms. And then uh, that was a kind of painting that they did in 16th century. But uh, there has al always been a lot of research done for painting music, and okay. many great artists have uh, worked on that topic.
but uh, being a singer myself i would wanted i wanted to express what i understood or what i felt okay. what emotion i felt so okay. that uh, study itself was my research material for the masters so okay. so when i did that kind of uh, contemporary work and and i wouldn't say it is completely contemporary because it was my i it was my uh, journey towards uh, contemporary art okay because um, that was very hard for me uh, having been brought up in a in an environment where um, i have seen uh, because my father and grandfather were illustrators so anything figurative anything beautiful and everything represented you know on a on the surface yes. is more um, pleasing to me okay. and i wouldn't connect to abstraction you know or modern painting that easily okay. so the whole process itself was for me learning about modern art learning about contemporary so my works uh, might not actually be uh, completely what a regular contemporary artist do. Yeah, yeah. but uh, the journey itself was a lot of struggle to break away from my way of thinking and to become right. Right. You know, to understand what uh, you know the uh, in contemporary terms and express in contemporary terms okay i can imagine you know getting being used to one form of art and for a very very long time from from with your parents and your grandparents and then suddenly coming here and then learning that this this other things are there right so how how do you find the art in say chennai and in singapore so what what is your view on the art scenes in both of these places um see um it um i because i am i haven't spent much time in chennai so lately okay. but um when i came when my experience with uh, an art school here actually uh, i realized within the 10 years from 97 to 2006 lot of changes has happened Okay. and what i we did in ba for uh, stella and uh, i mean ba fine arts in stella was about uh, we did history in fine arts so we covered from uh, uh, ancient uh, uh, civilizations until uh, we just reached modern art yeah within yeah. the 10 years yeah. internet yeah. itself made such a difference hmm. internet and uh, when i joined nafa when i saw diploma students and bachelor students uh, their works were completely contemporary they were thinking in terms of what they were they were in terms of expressing what they felt but when we did it was we we learned the basic me, um art mediums we did we, how to use watercolors oil painting and we studied great masters and we copied great masters and uh, it was all very um, academic way of uh, academic style of painting techniques that we learned but um, we never went into uh, more, we never covered much of modern art or contemporary art so after that um, in a way i was also uh, um, uh, you know that in between the time before 2003 i was also completely cut off from art school so when i went back to school i saw students they were only dealing with modern art and contemporary art they did cover a little bit of uh, renaissance and uh, great masters but they studied more of contemporary art than uh, okay uh, than the traditional of uh, the old ancient ones so because i found it very difficult because i was in a different era and they are in a different era okay and for me to learn uh, to uh, learn and understand their way of te- uh, le- teaching and understand and to come to that was uh, quite a challenge actually okay. i'm still learning even today okay. but um, so in that sense um, i would say uh, the singapore art scene is uh, actually i don't know how to comment on that mm-hmm. i don't know i think uh, Do you think people are more open here, more expressive here? Or yes. Um, could you, do you think we, you can make a in, comparison? I could only I could only talk about um, I could only talk about a very small uh, sort of what I remember from Chennai art. Scene. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But there are there are uh, uh, very interesting artists coming up. 
but uh, I I can I can say about this how the government is taking uh, an effort mm -hmm. to to build up um, artists of art circle in Singapore to come mm -hmm. to bring out uh, in, uh, talents local talents and to develop that and uh, the whole idea of Renaissance 2.0 uh, which started in 1990s actually um, has uh, they have seen result in the number of local artists and they are pro produ pro they are projecting the local artists in an international scene mm -hmm. like bringing in art stage uh, mm -hmm. international art events and and to give a platform to local artists to exhibit with other popular artists around the uh, from around the world yeah. you know in that way they are uh, actually um, i find that very helpful for to connect with the uh, western art scene or or in general around the world okay and uh, that i uh, that i thought i didn't uh, get it in uh, in chennai Okay. But this was very long time ago and I am mm. not sure what's happening now. Yeah. So, so how about your art now? So what do you, what do you, how are you practicing it now? Uh, are, you, are any exhibitions coming up? Uh, I, I'm what's your plan for the future, immediate yes. future? I, um, I, I try to exhibit at least uh, uh, once or twice a year. After when I was in college, it was much easier because uh, we had uh, shows coming up and uh, it was supported by the school and uh, financially it was much easier. But now it's even more challenging because I have to do it myself. I like okay. uh, I uh, should either join uh, uh, you know a group of artists and exhibit or uh, with a gallery. I should uh, you know I should be represented by the gallery. Last year, uh, last. Yeah, last year I was um, I exhibited my work in the uh, gallery of Nyani Arts, um, and uh, the year before last, or last year I think I showed my work at the uh, International Art Expo in Malaysia. Okay. And um, so um, the thing is, I I am still uh, working on what I really I am, you know, okay. about how what I really want to do. So I'm exploring various topics right now. Okay. Other than my, uh, after my research, I just left it at that and I haven't gone back to it after. And, you know, uh, it, being a woman, it's a, it's a challenging uh, thing to have a passion for yeah. and to keep in touch with that, you know, in addition to all of the responsibilities in the family. You know. yeah. So it is quite challenging and that's why I, I told myself I should at least exhibit two shows in my works at okay. least twice a year. Okay. So this year I was good. I had I gave my paint one of my old paintings to the. Okay, I gave one of my paintings for this Thane um, Relief Fund by. Uh, there was this special exhibition arranged by Anand Vidran in Chennai okay. at Lalit Kala Academy. So okay. I gave one of my paintings for that. So um, and then um, I am actually working on another show now, but um, so. That keeps me going. You know? okay. I yeah. have something to do, and then I do a set okay. work or you know, for the exhibit. So that keeps me going. Okay. And uh, until my kids are, you know, quite independent, you know, after that I will get more time. Okay. And uh, I'm trying to balance everything in, you know, in okay. Okay. my life. And, okay. You know, so, but I, I still keep one of my my. How could I say one? I still have one string attached to this. Yeah. And then I yeah. Can do it okay. Again. Okay. So, uh, in in all this journey, have there been any uh, mentor figures, you know, for you? Uh, I'm sure been, from your yeah, family. Yeah, there have been yeah. so many people. Yeah. Yes. Starting from my father, my mother, and uh, my husband. Um, so many things. I I learn. Uh, um, and the greatest influence is uh, the Swa uh, Swamiji from Temple of Finance. And, um, and there was this um, art director who did uh, um, art direction for the uh, Temple of Finance performances, uh, Mr. Sashi Dar Dr. Sashi Dharan. Okay. And uh, they, they all inspired me to continue to do what I want to do. And, okay. and I, um, then once I started my studies, I had great friends. Okay. I had um, uh, a fellow artist who was actually working with me in Temple of Fine Arts. Okay. Um, he, uh, he 
is a graduate from La Salle, okay. in Singapore, uh, Nikum. Mm -hmm. And um, my all my lecturers, Suzy Lingam, Ket, and uh, there are so many people. Okay. <laughs> Each of them, because you know, when you're totally lost, uh, somebody just comes by and then they give you direction. Okay. It could be difficult at that particular time, and you okay. wouldn't understand what they are trying to do, maybe. But at the end, you know, when you finish a uh, part of your journey, then you will realize, oh, this made me do this. So okay. there has always been many people around. Okay. okay. So, so what? Uh, so I'm sure you know, in all these years, there have been some struggles and, and some some hurdles that you have to get through. Uh, are there some things that stood out, and do you have any story about how you? You managed to c c cross that that hurdle. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, the the, the first uh, event that I mentioned about January 26, 2003, yeah. that yeah. itself was a big hurdle for me because, um, you know, uh, always I have always feared other people judging me. You know, with my father's name. That day, uh, I realized I I just went through the the day's proceedings, I painted and I and I, I wouldn't, yeah, as I told you, it, it is not a very great work, you know, I wouldn't feel very happy about it. But I realized that particular day happens to be my grandfather's birthday. Oh. I only realized that after a year, when I went okay. back to India and I was just browsing through old stuff and then I found a passport of my grandfather. And it was the day, 26 January. and. That actually uh, was kind of a wake up call. I probably mm -hmm. thought, okay, this is what it is, it is meant to be. And, yeah, and cool. I took that as a challenge. Oh, I mean, I took that as a message. Okay. And uh, as my calling, and it confirmed that, you know, yeah, I, need to, I need to be, I need to practice, and I need to go ahead with what I'm doing. Okay. okay. So there's one question that, I, that I've always thought about, right? So when I, when I tell somebody that, you know, um, I like art, you know, I like painting, they're like, oh, that's crap. What do you do? You know, you paint something and then you give an explanation for it, and then you're like, so that's art. Anybody can do it, and and you know that that kind of criticism is I I feel very common than for any other hobby that you tell them that you're doing. I mean, if you tell someone that you're singing, I don't think they criticize you, you know. But then this art I see is is very easy for people to have a take on. But yeah. how how do you have you ever met someone like that? How oh, do how I could you see see that that was the struggle that yeah. I was talking about earlier because. Having seen works of illustrator, illustrator works and very figurative works, that's what, well, that even I wouldn't, um, even while studying modern artists, I could understand why they were doing like that. But there are some works which I, which I can never um, connect to in, as an abstractionism. And, um, as an, as um, there are good works, there are good works. I like a few, art, and I would only start appreciating abstract works when I understand why the artist did like that. Mm -hmm. Until I understand, I wouldn't. Um, if if it doesn't immediately attract me, yeah, I wouldn't. I would think, oh, anybody can do this. Mm -hmm. I would also think like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is a whole reason why they, some artists, do what they're doing. So that makes the art. Uh, that makes art very interesting. Mm -hmm. That's why even nowadays, when somebody is really passionate about art, you see these days, if you want to study art, you don't have to uh, be very good in figure drawing. Okay, yeah. uh, you can do installation work. You can write. That is an art. Yeah. So your art, the way in which you express your ideas becomes uh, the art. Okay. So uh, it. Uh, I realize that you can never judge uh, anybody's work. It is their own uh, process of expressing what they are going through, and that itself is a. It's it's not the end of the journey. It's a it's a journey, and they go step by step. Okay. And I'm after actually I would after my um, study here, um, I realized that I realized that whatever anybody it's very, it is not right for anyone to comment about other people's work that anybody can do. Mm -hmm. It is only it is like a fingerprint. You know. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is yours and that is what that makes it very special. Okay. I have, I have one final question. So for all the, the people who are reading this and who are seeing this interview, so what, what kind of message do you have? So for all the people who want to lead their lives, who want to be passionate about what they're doing, be it art, be it just living life. I would say that uh, if you're really in 
interested in it. You shouldn't worry about what other people say. You should be true to yourself and uh, you should gain the strength. And it took me a very long time to realize that. And uh, uh, I know it is very hard because I've, I've been through that. So if you're really passionate about it, you should just be at it and continue to be at it at whatever cost. Mm -hmm. You know, even yeah, even a minimum of 10 minutes you want to spend with it, spend every day. Mm -hmm. And that will give you uh, the best result. Yeah. And when you feel that reward, you know, in any way, in any, the smallest way possible, that will really make you very happy. And in fact, in this, I, I'd say in uh, in in the everyday life, so it's so stressful. Even if you're doing another job or something, if you have your passion right next to you, it will keep you going. Okay. I I, I realize that because I have I have this friend who is actually working in a in a shipping business, okay. but he's so passionate about uh, uh, sculptures, uh, temple sculptures. And he runs a blog. His name is uh, Mr. Vijay Kumar. He runs a blog called Poetry in Stone. He inspired me so much because even though he has a job, his passion keeps him going. And I'm so amazed with the 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 with the vigorous uh, yeah. with the vigor that he is actually keeping up the blog and writing yeah. about it. And he, he inspires so many people around the world. Okay. And he talks about sculptures. That that is an example of what passion can do. Okay. So yeah. I'll, I'll Thank you so much, Nia. That, I think that was like the best message that we got from this interview. Thank you so much for this interview. Thank you. <laughs>